approach, you can execute those approaches. Sure. Um, I mean, so but, I'm not sure where, you... where, where network programming sits. I'm not sure whether it sits in the use case or in the technology. Where do you think it sits well, in IP? It... <laughs> so, I, I mean, network programmability may be a use case of its own, or it may be um, a, a way to achieve some of the use cases, but I think use cases, are, at least for me, use cases are pretty clear. And by having network programmability be a separate uh, item, um, no, no less or no more, um, it's, uh, it allows us to take it where uh, the discussion goes. Well, let's just not drop it. I don't care where it goes, but let's not drop oh, it. Oh, I for sure, not drop it. it. I'm just saying it's a separate, yeah, um, you know, bullet point. I I agree. We we should keep it. Uh... Yeah, maybe separate or, but it has to be the, uh, covered in our discussion. Uh, so the question was from Loa is uh, item number three from the last agenda was not discussed and uh, we want to either carry forward. Uh, I think um, the impression I'm getting is we will not talk about it today. So what the, uh, uh, in, in my presentation, uh, the work certainly uh, motivated by uh, several use cases. I uh, actually list them all, and uh, but uh, uh, didn't give an in-depth dis discussion uh, how each of them work. But definitely, we can get an idea is, is it, um, uh, for what applications it can be used. Is it uh, Huayu you, you're speaking? Yes, yes, it's me. Okay. Okay, yeah, I mean, definitely, if you want to help also on the use case, uh, you know, describing the use cases that uh, that need to be covered. Uh, and, uh, yeah, um, no, and, uh, so I, I would, sorry, Patrick, um, I would also say that um, in my discussion, um, talking about the, the changes possible in the label stack, there were several um, use cases, the idea of having a single SPL that does multiple things. Um, so I can, I, I mean, I have talked a little bit about it, but I can definitely come back to this. Okay, uh, so. But Kiriati, both in your case and in uh, how you case, the use case is uh, well, our all of our use cases are more than uh, what you are covering in in, in your proposals, and uh, your proposals are also covering more than the use cases does. So it's kind of an orthogonal uh, thing between the use case and and the proposals, and we need to sort that out. Sure. No, I'm no. I'm, I'm not saying that this is not an important discussion. I'm just saying that. There has been a, um, you know, there have been, and I think how, how you said the same thing, that uh, the documents, the drafts, uh, do describe use cases. Um, calling them out and and um, focusing on them will help, but it's not that there hasn't been any discussion on this. Right, I, I definitely agree that, it, that they they would help because the use cases would transcend all of the pieces of work and help us decide which one or ones we would take forward. So I do think it's important that they're not buried in um, particular um, target solutions because they have much wider scope than that. Sure, and, and it's also a way of evaluating, you know, a particular <coughs> solution that it does it match up to the use case? How, how well does it serve the purpose? Indeed, indeed. <clears throat> so we had someone earlier that uh, proposed the discussion on the use cases. Uh, I'm not sure I remember. What, the what wasn't that Kieran? That... I think it was, yes. We probably should get in touch and see if we can get some help from there also. Okay. Uh... I can add her name, but I don't want to be intrusive. No. Um, Put a okay. question mark, maybe. Uh, yeah. Right. Well, I'm sure I heard her express an interest in this, but 
Yeah. It's not on the quarter though, I don't think. <coughs> At least not so far, yeah. Uh, so we have we have one item which we want to talk about today. Uh and we wanted to visit any previous action items uh, from last time. Um, the, it, I, I think we, uh, we did cover, you know, last time we said we need to define what, uh, what needs to be carried in the label stack, what needs to be carried after the bottom stack and what uh, things are applicable to what segments of our MPLS path. Uh, uh, so if, if we divide the path into segments, then uh, we might be invoking actions at certain segments. So this was an action item to the team, and I think it will go into the use case the discussion. Maybe I'm guessing uh, it will go there. Uh, unless you're thinking, um, anyone is thinking of documenting this in another place. Um, so um, one of the action items that I had um, was to create a wiki um, and now I'm hearing about GitHub, but um, I'm okay to do it either place. I just started the wiki um, for what goes in the label stack. And um, so it's not just what the data is, but you know the issues around putting, putting things in the label stack and potential changes we can make. For example, not uh, using the TC or repurposing the TC bits and the uh, TTL bits. So, um, like I said, I just started doing it. If, if uh, the preference is to do this via GitHub, uh, just find me at where the GitHub page is and I can do it there. I think the wiki is fine for a collaborative document we want to edit there, unless people feel it's in the okay. shape of becoming a draft, at which point in time it's probably better to use you know, a markup file on GitHub, right? Unfortunately, tooling isn't very unified. I, I yeah, agree I know, I like that. Yeah, a wiki would, would be great, uh, but then pointers from the wiki to a GitHub would be, yeah. yeah, maybe pointers from the wiki to the GitHub is, if needed, for documents uh, repository. By direction, yeah. 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 Uh, so with the wiki that you have, Kiriti, uh, I mean, if you send us a pointer to it, or even if you create it directly on uh, on MPLS page, would be great. Uh, I don't know where. Oh, okay. Uh, I was putting. I have published it, but I was putting it in the open design team page. Um, if you want, I can put it up one level up from there. No, no, that's what I meant. Is the oh, yeah open oh, design okay. team? Yeah. Page. yeah. But but I don't know yeah, where it's yeah, living. You wanted to share it with us. Uh, where is it? Or not yet? Um, I haven't published it, but um, oh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Let me. So, Kiriti, yeah, so work in progress. Kiriti, yeah. a question. You have a wiki page that says, "Come to describe what goes in the label stack." Uh, yeah. Do we need it? Companion document that actually describes what goes after the label stack. Um, uh, yes, but that was that was not my action item. But yes, definitely we do. Yeah. Okay. So, but we probably should find someone that can can work on that also. Okay. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Okay. Um, okay. So, um, I don't know if you can see, um, Tarek, um, but there is, um, the Two subsections after agendas and meeting notes. Uh, sorry, there's one subsection called ongoing design wikis, and one is label stack, and that's you know, the starting point for what I'm doing. Um, and uh, to Loa's point, we could have a second one that says beyond label stack or whatever, and that could be the one that uh, describes um, the design team's efforts 
on what comes after. Okay. Yeah, I, we did. Okay. Uh, you're right. We did, did separate them to two, two tracks, uh, but but then we recently are you know uh, putting merging both tracks into one meeting. So, but you're right. There are. Two uh, I mean, the meetings. They they could be a single meeting, but I think um, having these discussions be separate um, will allow people to focus. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we we I think we agree. Uh, what we said uh, at that working group share meeting uh, when we discussed this is that uh, we will dr drive the meeting through the agenda. So uh, make sure that everything is discussed, everything is documented. Uh, discussions are sufficiently se separated and, uh, and concluded. So yeah, I think we agree. All right, so back to the action items. Uh, so we have last time talked about, you know, uh, we were discussing the uh, the idea of parsing and uh, finding the bottom of stack and uh, how you, uh, you uh, did uh, express interest in providing an example in P4. I don't know if you have an update on that action item. Uh, yes, yes, uh, but I think uh, uh, we need more. I, I need more time. Uh, uh, maybe we can defer this uh, to the next meeting. I do have something uh, prepared. Sure. Okay. No problem. Uh, uh, all right. I think these are. Uh, you know, we talked about. Uh, you know. Uh, mutable and immutable data that can be carried in the MPLS header or after the MPLS header. We talked about uh, variable uh, ancillary data uh, when when uh, when Stewart was presenting the idea uh, and the idea of putting it towards the end uh, if it is variable length uh, and there were a couple of ideas there. Um, so this is a recap of the last time uh, minutes that we took. Do, do we have a, a use case for variable length auxiliary data? Uh, I thought IOEM would... Uh, so would I need... looked at the IOEM spec this morning, and it appears that uh, to prescribe that the packet pre-allocates space for the IOEM information. For every hop? that It knows the number of hops in advance. Okay. Or, or it, yeah, yeah, I mean, that I, I read the spec this morning, and that's what I thought it said. Okay. There are two options. One is the incremental, one is uh, uh, pre-allocated. No, but I think they are both pre-allocated. Incremental. No. no. Well, the I incremental is uh, every time you insert the data to the to the uh, header. No, I thought that the I thought it, that was in a pre-allocated space. Read the text I sent you this morning. How are you? Okay, that's very good. So I think we more than not just. Oh, do we do we have an IOEM expert on the call? So uh, Rakesh was here. Yeah, hi uh, everyone. So uh, yeah, there is a pre-allocated and uh, incremental. I think there are two uh, trace points that I have seen in the IPPM IOEM document. Okay, because I read the text this morning from the what looked like the IOEM data document, and it implies so. Well, the incremental the, uh, option is a um, the the data will be uh, pushed into the node data immediately following the option header. There's no pre-allocated reading. There's no pre-allocated space for it because that's certainly what the text looked like. It said. No, it's a it's it's keep increasing the size of the header. That, that's for sure. I I I follow this work from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. No, I I just say I read the draft this morning, and um, maybe the draft isn't clear. Um, where is it? Okay. Right, so under incremental, pre under incremental, it says 
the IOEM encapsulating node allocates space for the incremental trace option type. Encapsulating is the, the, the ingress, right? Yeah, that's what I would have thought. So I'm reading, <laughs> and I, maybe I don't understand it, but I'm reading section 5.4 of um, draft IETF IPVM IOEM data version 12. And in the middle of the section on incremental trace option, it says the trace option is defined as a container of node fields where each node allocates and pushes its node space immediately following the option header. It says that all right, but it says later on, the IOEM encapsulating nodes allocate space for the incremental trace. Now, I don't know what, what, what which of those two is the correct interpretation, but I do wonder what happens about um pit path mtu etc if packets are randomly increasing the size of a packet along its path it's where nodes are doing that but anyway could someone just clarify what that sentence in the middle of the paragraph means so my assumption was that you pre-allocated the space and then a no a a p router would take the amount of that space that it needed for its job as opposed to the previous one where the p router had a specific place in this in the iom data that it was supposed to write because someone perhaps clarify we can take it that i mean if someone is... then what was the difference do you think is between the pre-allocation and the incremental i think incremental so pre-allocate i think says your node six this is where you put your information at least that's my interpretation right whereas incremental the encapsulating node says here's 100 bytes and then node six says oh i need to put something in here i will put the information in but i don't know whether that's what it means or not certainly that's that's not easy to define uh to, 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 to determine from uh the text in the draft because it definitely says the ioem encapsulating node allocates space for the incremental trace option type Can you can you please give me the pointer to the uh, paragraph you were reading, uh, Stewart? So it's, uh, it's paragraph five point four. It's section five point four IOAM trace option types from draft uh, I draft IPVM IOAM data twelve, and I'm reading incremental option type midway through the paragraph, starting the IOAM. Okay, um, I'll try to search for it, uh, or if you if you paste it in the text, it would be helpful. Uh, I did note it down as an action item to come back to it now, or if someone can clarify whether a pre-allocated buffer is, exists in the packet or not. All right. If it, wait, wait, yeah, um, actually, um, wait, wait, I just... wait, 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 wait. Parrot, did we yeah. start the reco recording? It's a record. Yeah, we, we are recording. I, I apologize. Okay. I, I, okay. I didn't want to interrupt people uh, when they were speaking, so I started the recording. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I just wanted to mention that um, my interpretation of um, incremental is as um, noted by Arakesh. And uh, so it's. Each node, each uh, IAM node, if it's half by half option, adds to the packet. So not, there is no pre-allocated space. And um, the text that Stuart pointed out, it's really confusing now. Um, and I think it's a critical to bring it to discussion because uh, this document is in ISG review. Uh, yes, it is certainly critical to do that. Now, the other thing that's critical is I couldn't see anything about how path MTU was was, um, was dealt with, and if we're going to have any form of, inc uh, of, of packet 
uh, size increment on its path, we need a whole lot, bunch of text about PMTU. Yes, I agree. I do see there's a field remaining length, which applies to both allocated and incremental, which takes MTU into account, but uh, yeah, it's not quite clear. Uh, I think that remaining le length is to accommodate uh, pre-allocated uh, trace method. Now, it does actually say um, this type of trace recording is useful for some of the hardware implementations as it implements the need for the transit network elements to read the full array and allows for arbitrary long packets as the MTU uh, allows. Um, someone who suggested we send an email to the IP performance management working group. Anyone wants to send that email to clarify or during the poll, I heard, uh, or do you, you want to allow ad hoc uh, to go freely this or? Anyone wants to volunteer? Uh, uh, if not, the chairs will send it. Uh. Uh, well, I can send something to the ISG. Uh, Which is because uh, if they're reviewing yeah, it, then yeah. and that's where it needs to go. Yeah. Uh, if you send to the ISG, make sure that it's actually also addressed to the PPPM working group. Okay. Well, I'm not I'm sure, sure. I'm subscribed to that or not, but anyway. We'll see. Is it, uh, IPPM or, or IPOAM? Uh, yeah. IP. It's IPPM. IPPM, okay. IPPM. Thank you. Okay, um, I don't have anything anything from the action items from last week. I think we can, unless somebody has another item to discuss uh, on today's agenda, I will um, uh, give... Uh, one, one, one thing, Tarek. Yeah. Uh, when we discussed extension headers last time, uh, we tried to place an action item on uh, the author of, well, on Kireti and uh, how you to actually look at uh, the mechanism for finding out if we can use the uh, Kireti proposal for detecting extension headers. That's right. Uh, yes. Did we did we did we get any response? Uh, that was an action item on how why you I I believe. Uh, Maybe uh, no, I'm, I'm well to reach out to Kiriti, right? That's what we told him. Either way, I'm I'm happy. We haven't uh, gotten together yet, so I'm happy to reach out to oh, how you. Um, so um, how you, you you and I should talk um, offline and uh, figure out how we can do this. Yeah, yeah, we could. So I see that that draft has been 93 days with discusses on it. The, um, with the discusses. The IPPM? Yeah. So I will send them a note. Okay, please do. And I think you can actually address it from uh, this discussing discussion in the design team. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else uh, before we give the floor to Huayu?
Okay. Uh, for you, uh, I'll stop sharing yeah. and you go ahead and uh, share. Okay. Find my screen. Uh, can you see my screen? Yep. Okay. So I will mute my. Uh, okay. Can uh, okay. I, I'm going to talk about this uh, MPS extension header dropped. The current version is uh, 04, but we can actually start this work in uh, 2018. And the, the motivation for it is that uh, at that time, you find uh, many novel in, uh, in network service um, in, uh, emerging. Uh, what's so called the in network service means uh, the, the, the service or application. Uh, is uh, added within the network. It not start from the end host. Um, such uh, use cases uh, include the in situ OEM uh, for user traffic uh, telemetry data collection and network slicing uh, by uh, split network resource to support uh, multiple virtual networks and the service function chaining, uh, which is uh, we all know uh, used to um, Access different um, functions in network um, using a chain, and the beer is a new uh, multicast uh, protocol. Uh, and also, <clears throat> we find we have the segment routing, and uh, within the segment routing, we can do uh, various kind of uh, network programming. Uh, these are, are all needed to add some uh, uh, specific um, headers to the to the packet to tell the node what to do. And there are other. Um, uh, very, this is actually a very active area. Um, people also propose to add actual headers to the packets uh, for net network security uh, functions, such as a DDoS um, detection and prevention. And of course, uh, by uh, using, uh, I introduce uh, in network service, we can do a lot of uh, uh, different uh, network telemetry uh, techniques to uh, improve the network visibility. So there are some uh, requirements, common requirements for this uh, uh, in network services is that uh, first, uh, now the user traffic needed to be able to encapsulate some actual instruction header or metadata to it. And also because this is a in network services and uh, um, we need to be able to add, um, process and remove those instruction header or metadata in the network. So we cannot uh, limit it to only the end host. And also, it's very possible we will support multiple um, parallel um, services uh, in a single user packet. So we need to be able to stack multiple coexisting services on a packet. And uh, so far, um, uh, there's no standard solution for MPoS to meet such requirements yet. So that's why uh, we come up with this idea. So the solution is to introduce um, MPS uh, extension headers to, uh, uh, to the MPS network. And we should stop designing piecemeal solutions and incompatible solutions, uh, which compete some common resources. Like, um, you know, uh, if we uh, work in that way, um, each one might need, require some special purpose label. Also, uh, very commonly, they will um, request to use a location after the label stack. So if uh, we do the piecemeal solution, uh, we'll end up with this uh, bad situation. And instead, we should uh, define a generic framework once for all. Um, the, 
basically we can uh, in, encapsulate the, uh, the service instruction and header or metadata as a extension header. So extension header is like a common container for all this um, uh, different uh, to, to meet the requirement for all these uh, different applications. And then we can insert those uh, extension header uh, between the MPS label stack and the payload. So this uh, in concept is very similar to the IPv6 extension header, but uh, we all know it's also very difficult to use the extension header in IPv6 networks. So we should learn the experience and lessons from the uh, from IPv6. So what's good and bad about IPv6 extension header? The good thing about it is uh, it's, it's to try to keep the base header short and make all the optional extension headers uh, flexible. And so we can chain those extension headers together and uh, in this way, we can support uh, multiple extension headers in a single packet. Also, we unified uh, for IPv6, it unifies the extension headers uh, as just uh, another product headers using the next header indicator. So the, the next header is unified, uh, is encoded uh, using the unified uh, net internet protocol uh, number. So in this way, the the, up, uh, the upper layer particles like the uh, layer four uh, uh, TCP UDP uh, is just a uh, uh, look as if another uh, extension header. But uh, there are many drawbacks about IPv6 extension header. The, the fourth thing is uh, uh, it's enforced by the uh, RFC uh, 8200 that the first one is it's only end hosts are allowed to add and remove extension headers. This is a seriously limited uh, usefulness of extension header because for, 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 as I mentioned, for many in-network services, those headers must be added or removed in-network, not from end host. And also the, uh, for the uh, IPv6, only one hop by hop header is allowed. Um, but you you can we can imagine we might need many multiple hop by hop services, but in IPv6 they are forced to uh, to uh, use a hierarchical structure, uh, i.e. We, we just need we can only support this uh, uh, these functions by make each of this as a HBH uh, hop by hop options. So just uh, stack them again into a single HBH header, uh, which is inflexible. Also, uh, we simply uh, uh, chain this extension headers together. There's no way to directly access uh, the original uh, up layer or payload. Um, so in case we want to access a header like the, such as a TCP UDP, uh, we need to scan through all the extension headers. So that's the is kind of uh, um, uh, inefficient. So the um, the the concept of the uh, MPS extension header uh, is uh, very simple. Oh. We just um, stack uh, all um, multiple extension headers uh, together. Actually, uh, we we also use a uh, um, use a ch uh, ch chain them together. Basically, you, uh, this is very similar uh, to the IPv6 extension header. Always oh, keep jumping. And uh, so each uh, extension header actually indicates the length of itself and the type of the next extension header. And uh, uh, the extension header tab also adopts the standard uh, internet protocol numbers. So th in this way, we can unify this uh, with uh, uh, the, the use in the uh, IP network. And uh, also we add another uh, summary of the extension header. We call that a header of uh, extension header or HEH. Uh, which is used to summarize uh, how many uh, extension headers we have and uh, uh, what's the length of that. 
So this can allow us to jump the, the entire, all the extension headers in just one step. And uh, we also um, add need, need to add two special next header tags. The first one is none, which uh, means there's no other extension headers um, behind it. Uh, this is this uh, is useful for some special packets like some uh, in, uh, injected uh, probing packets from the control plane. And the second uh, second type is um, a special types the unknown uh, because this is because uh, uh, in the current uh, uh, MPS design, there's no way from the label stack to indicate what type of the payload it include. So. Uh, if we want to insert a new uh, extension header within the network, we, we might not have that uh, knowledge as well. So the, the easiest way to do is to just mix a, a next uh, header unknown. So this is a try to be uh, compatible with the current uh, uh, MPS practice. And uh, having this uh, extension headers, we also need to have an indicator uh, in the MPS label stack to tell uh, uh, there are uh, extension headers need to be processed after the label stack. So in, in uh, two, two weeks ago, I have uh, uh, presented uh, the several uh, optional ideas to support that. Um, although it's still pending to decide uh, which one uh, is the best. Um, also, we we uh, can support two types of uh, um, extension headers. The first is a uh, uh, end to end, uh, which means uh, this header should only be processed, inserted, or removed um, by the uh, uh, tunnel end nodes, uh, like the uh, uh, PE uh, device. Um, but the other uh, hop by hop type extension header means to be processed by every node along the um, MPLS folding path. So th this slide uh, gives you more details about the uh, yes. encapsulation. The so the the first part uh, is the MPLS label stack. And within it, there are some indicators. Um, where it is located is a note that is uh, to be determined. But uh, the, the point is we need something to indicate that after the label stack, there are extension headers. Then after the label stack, the first wor uh, word is uh, called header of extension header. The first uh, nibble is reserved. Uh, it should avoid using some uh, existing uh, defined uh, number like a four, six, or something else uh, to not confuse this with a, a normal um, packet, IP packet. And uh, then uh, follow this is uh, the, the extension header count to tell you how many extension headers you follow, follow this word and also the total length of the extension header. Then uh, next header, uh, then the last part is the next header tell you what's the type of the header immediately follow it. And then, then you, we chain this uh, header one to header n together. So each extension header, what we didn't need to define the internal structure of each uh, extension header, um, but uh, each of them has two uh, leading words. One is just uh, tell you what's the type of the next header, and then tell you what's the length of the current header. So this is identical to the uh, uh, what's the in IPv6 extension header. And finally, uh, the for the last uh, extension uh, header, the next header will to point to the original upper layer per, per, protocol, whatever it, it is. So this is a, a format. Um, for discussion purpose, so I think we think the extension header is especially uh, interesting for MPOS because 
NPS labels that overhead can be much smaller <clears throat> than IPv6. So we all know there are some uh, limitations or constraints for hardware capability to process a header. So the header overhead is a big concern. Uh, uh, but for IPv6, uh, header overhead is uh, is big. Um, but for MPOS, e each label is just a uh, uh, four bytes, four byte long. Uh, so if uh, uh, we can support multiple labels, still the size could be smaller than IPv6. So in terms of the overhead, MPOS is uh, more compelling. And also MPOS is a protocol independent and uh, it can be used to encapsulate wireless uh, protocols. So it's, it's a kind of a generic transport protocol. So uh, it gave us more flexibility and uh, room for, yeah, for new network innovations. And by uh, designing uh, this extension header idea, we do need to have uh, several uh, considerations. The first is, uh, of course, the performance. Uh, we all realize that uh, by adding the extension headers, uh, those headers are supposed to be processed by the data plane. And thus, uh, the performance is critical. Uh, we should ensure um, that the, the, the prudent uh, um, actually slow down the, uh, the forwarding performance. So that's a big concern. Uh, the second one uh, is uh, scalability. So in terms of the, uh, what kind of uh, functions we can support and how we use uh, existing uh, uh, resources like the um, uh, label space, uh, like the um, um, number of special um, purpose indicator required, those all limit the, the, the scalability of the solution. And uh, we might also uh, consider about the backward compatibility. To what extent we want this to still be applied in the current uh, or legacy MPS network? That's a, a big question because, uh, of course, by introducing uh, any of these new uh, header, uh, new extension headers, or these new functions, the legacy. Um, Node will not be able to process them or even recognize them. Then, uh, do we really need, um, you know, uh, once we enable this new uh, type of uh, uh, package, new, new, new uh, extension headers, do we really need the network, uh, uh, legacy network can still at least forward it or? Um, we just need to require the, uh, the entire network to be. Uh, upgraded uh, before we can apply that. So that's a big question. And the last thing is uh, flexibility. Uh, we cannot foresee, once we give this uh, mechanism, it's just like a container. So it's open to any future innovations. Uh, so we should keep it uh, very flexible uh, by not uh, add any artificial limitations to the solution. Um, so, uh, I think based on the current, um, uh, existing some examples, we already seen examples that, um, you know, it's a very diversified, um, uh, uh, applications and, uh, also, um, also we, we are not clear, but based on my past knowledge that some node will change its size during the transmission, so, uh, some header will change its size. Uh, so, um, so that's why we shouldn't give any, uh, you know, artificial uh, limitations to make it inflexible, uh, because otherwise, if we don't make it right, then at some point we may face a situation. Okay, again, we can no support some specific services. That will will be a bad situation. And in addition to the indicator draft and this extension header draft, it describes the, um, the format of the extension headers. And uh, we also have uh, two more drafts talking about MPS extension header architecture and operations. And for those, those two, uh, I, I, I will find time to give a, a further presentation about that. 
but uh, this is uh, this is all for today. Thank you very much. How are you? Yeah. I have a, a couple of uh, questions and a comment. Um, the, the one comment is that there is a certain similarity and commonality with Jeffrey's draft on generic transport functions. So, uh, you know, it's probably worthwhile for you both to talk. But um, the question I have is, is it useful to separate hop by hop uh, extensions and sort of more end to end, although the end is harder to yeah. to define. Yeah, right? a, maybe it is ingress, egress. It's a good question. Uh, the, the, so first of all, it's uh, obviously those two types of uh, headers have very different behavior. One only need to be uh, handled by two end nodes and uh, another is uh, handled by every uh, nodes on the path. So the reason we yeah, yeah. separate these two is for also for the optimization. Uh, we, we, uh, I'm missing that point actually. Actually, we, we, sh we should always uh, insert the HBH, uh, H hop by hop extension headers in front of the, uh, of the E2E headers. So in that way, exactly. we can have a better access to those HBH because those are processed um, per, per, uh, per, hop, per hop. And uh, why we do this? Because you know, once we have a multiple extension headers, the size could be very large. So you think about the uh, second routing SRH and IOAM header, those are all very large. Then if uh, we don't limit their uh, insertion location, then it's possible it will be located outside of the packet window, beyond the uh, processing capability of the chip, then we cannot uh, see them anymore. But if we put them in front of the, uh, in uh, front of the um, uh, attached headers, then that make the, will make them easy to be seen by most of the um, devices. Then those can be processed. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And also, I think there's a possibility that uh, in doing the hop by hop processing, you absorb the hop by hop stuff. In which case, when you you know get to the end, you only have uh, very little to process. Yes. So um, that brings me to my other point, which is um, both you and Jeffrey are using the IPv6 sort of TLV, but the TLV is next header type and then length and then value. And I understand why IPv6 did it, but I don't think we should do it in MPLS. Um, so you should just say that this header type, uh, length and then value, and then you go to the next header and then you see the type again. And especially if you're inserting, um, uh, you know, if you're adding, a, say, a new hop by hop extension, um, you want to, as you said, put it in front of the end to end uh, stuff. Um, so let's say I want to put it after extension number three, um, but extension number three is already saying the next extension is, you know, XYZ. And now I want to insert something in there. I have to rewrite this current extension, the uh, extension C's next pointer, to be the new one, put the new one, and so the new one, say the next pointer is whatever was the original, you know, extension four. So yes. it would be much, much more, much simpler and much more localized if you say, I'm just going to do the regular TLV and stuff at next type, current length, current value. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh I am not sure because uh, it is a TLV. There's a next type, current length, current value. If you look at the structure of each header, yeah, yeah, you 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 right. are uh, right. If we need to insert a new header, we need to modify the previous next header, and the okay. yeah, of course the current <laughs> header you you already format that because you know where you insert it. You already know what's the next header. What's the current lens? Um, so you can. So you you want to have a description that each header should only describe itself and say nothing about the next one. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, no, that, 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 that's why, why that's a problem because uh, 
if only it describes itself, then you will keep all those somewhere else. You also need to modify that. So th th that's no, 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 that's not quite true. You, as long as you have a dummy one at the end that says payload follows, you can do the whole thing with self-description. What about the top one? Uh, already the has top one, well, the top the top one. The, if you, everyone should be self-describing. Right. That way, yeah, you right. can always parse it, and then when you run out at the end, you can say payload follows, presumably. Right or none or whatever. Yeah. I mean, uh... <clears throat> but but the but top one. Was remember why we didn't do that back in IP days? Why didn't we have self-descriptive headers? Because that wasn't the philosophy of IP, where uh, it was the philosophy of ISO, and there was a big religious war going on. Okay. And, you know, I, IPv6 start off with the next header saying, you know, this is TCP or UDP or whatever, and, and so then they followed that philosophy. Where that came from, I don't know, so maybe, you know, what Stuart said. But we are starting afresh here, and so I think we can do this right. And. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's it's not a huge change, but I think it makes a big difference to people who are parsing as well as people who are inserting and removing things. So the the thing that scares me with all this, though, is, is how, do you, how do you do per hop option mapping? So do, is the assumption that every node can figure out which of this mess of... of um, extension headers it needs to process if so how on earth does that work because in the modern world we we, we tend to be making the packets uh, describe their own processing characteristics as they go through the network and not all processing actions will have to happen on every hop but you um i mean in mps you do use a label uh to identify the the node so which means even you bind the uh, header to the label, you basically just carry that in the package. Right, so, so you're saying that we have different a different from, from the control plane configurations I tell the particular node, and here you, you should process this header or that header. But, 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 but maybe not on that packet. Uh, I, I also have the same doubt. How, uh, how do you, do you have, can you have multiple hop by hop extended headers in your yes, yes, proposal. Yes. Okay, how do you say that this node processes hop by hop header two and not on, one? This, on this packet? I, on I, this packet. I, I, I configured yeah. because of... uh, uh, yeah. can you selectively say that I want you to process uh, EH2 and not EH1? No. Uh, I think that's too complicated. If, if, think it's, a, if, if it's a, and so, so let my logic slice is if it's a hop by hop, it's a, by default, it's assume each node on the path should process it. You If you don't want process it, it's your um, um, decision. You can configure it to not do that. But if you don't do anything, then you should process it. Well, so it, it all depends on what we want. So it all depends if we're building service chains or not. So we built service chains by having the the um, uh, the um, MPS label stack point to different for, service. Um, for, yeah, for service chain, I mentioned as a use case. I I will just add the NSH as a extension header. Then also by doing that, we can support adding um, more um, uh, metadata. To the, well, the, to the, to the, that, that's a much better solution than the current proposed uh, in the MPS, because in that way you can only use a label to identify the uh, the, the, the the chain uh, to, but you cannot add any optional uh, uh, metadata, pass any metadata between the nodes. So if we put the NSH as a uh, uh, extension header. Then we can naturally support the, the uh, function uh, function chain. Then also uh, we can tell. Well, we have an RF. We do have an we, RFC. Because we carry because we carry that um, uh, all the information with the extension header. We we can the node can definitely know if it uh, need to process it or not. Well, we do have an RFC for how to do this entirely in label. Yeah, because we once we introduce this uh, new extension headers, 
it doesn't mean so we, we can use this for any uh, existing um, RFC. So if you, you use uh, uh, existing RFCs, maybe you, you shouldn't use that to, to do the uh, RFC, uh, service, uh, service function chaining. So, so I want to get off the subject of service function chaining and to the more general question. I, I, I agree with how you that if you say this is hop by hop, then every node should at least peek at it. Uh, I mean, assuming it's within the processing budget, should peek at it and say, does this apply to me or not? And if it only applies to certain nodes, then maybe the sub-describing um, part also says to which nodes it applies. But in general, we're having, we have this dichotomy. Either every node looks at it or only the end nodes look at it. And um, that, you know, so if you don't have any hop by hop thing, you know, you can just skip by it and, and just pass it on to the next guy. But if there is hop by hop, you'd have to, to the best of your capability, process the hop by hop pieces and see what applies to you. And the processing could be just, you know, it doesn't apply to me, but you have to do that. So, Kiriti, I think and what you're saying is that the node that. itself can have a policy to say that either process or not, or you can put the policy inside the packet to say, you know, right. this node should process it or not. And I, you know, ideally, I would like to see, uh, you know, in the packet, we can carry such a policy if we need to. Indeed. And, uh, that's quite clear from the way that segment routing has gone. Right. That, that it's the current way that operators want to, to do things. They want to specify the policy inside the packet and not um, do it through some um, uh, DPI approach or some um, uh, ACH approach. Not ACH, um, ACL approach. Yeah, so, so first of all, uh, by doing that, carry these policies, of course it will add an overhead to the package because you sure. add this policy. Second, for each of the use case you mentioned, I have solutions using the extension header to, to just no, no, there will be no problem to tell each node what to do. Yeah, I um, well, well, I need to see that written down. Yeah. Uh, we 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 are we i would like to see that we uh, we tackle the problem and then find the solution and we agree on the problem i mean right we, can I, I think we can agree that we need i think we can agree that we need the packet to carry its own policy i think that would be good i think there's an um you know there's potentially uh, since there's a header of headers kind of thing there's uh, potential place in there to say here are the, the the types of nodes that should process this, or or maybe some you know not not specific node callouts, but a way to sort of encapsulate um, nodes that are uh, area border routers should uh, should uh, process this or whatever something right, and that way you could probably you know by passing just a header of headers uh, say okay the rest of it is not interesting to me or wait there might be something there that that's interesting to me. The other thing I would say is that um, going further on the, the the sort of order in which you put these things, um, if you put the hop by hop things that you think most nodes will process up front, and then put the hop by hop ones that you know are more filtered uh, further down, and then at the bottom you put the end to end stuff, um, then the the probability that you'd have to go deeper and deeper into the packet goes down. So I think these are optimizations we can sort of work out, but I think the general idea is that hop by hop means everyone should try to peek at it and end to end means you don't need to look at it unless you're the one popping the label stack. So um, I, uh, I think the, you know, what, what you said about the self descriptive, I think the, the, the mistake that was done in V6 was that this the scheme of you know pointing to the next one that makes sense when you go into a different namespace like what we do when we go uh, uh, across layers right from network layer to transport and so on but here we're really staying within the same layer right so that's why the self descriptive is a lot more natural and i think there was they just applied you know a principle across ip and tcp to extension headers in v6 which 
I think. But uh, so sorry, my question, uh, Kiriti. Um, so it, it it sounded like uh, you would think that removal of headers once they're not needed anymore, even if they're in the middle of the sequence of extension headers, would be beneficial, beneficial, feasible, or what do you think there? So I think um, both addition and removal of headers uh, would be good not to rule out upfront. Um, goes back to what how you were saying about flexibility. Mm -hmm. And um, to the extent that you can remove things, um, you make processing for everyone who comes afterwards easier. Um, so I think those are good things to keep in the architecture. And um, you know, again, uh, subject to use cases um, bearing this out. But if you can do that without burdening the architecture, I think that's a good thing to have. So, because I'm asking, because I think very fundamentally, right, so SRH had to basically live with not removing anything, and they try to define that also as a benefit, and I haven't tried to figure it out, that you have more visibility about what happened with the packet on the receiving side. And so I'm wondering if we're talking about option, if, you know, not removing things has could also have benefits in the MPLS world. So, um, I, I mean, there's, there's always a benefit that you don't have to change the overall packet length or, or stuff, stuff, although we don't have an overall packet length, or maybe it's out in the Ethernet header, I don't know. But, but um, for me, the, the value of this is, I mean, if you do classical MPLS and you have these hierarchical LSPs, you might say, I want to add another hop uh, IOM or uh, another something for that segment, which is my hierarchical LSP. And then at the end of that, I want to remove it. And and so that the end-to-end -end, uh, label, uh, oh, sorry, MPLS packet would have these sections where it makes sense to do certain things and then remove them. And uh, so both insertion and removal, just as you would insert and uh, remove labels, you might want to insert and remove these yeah, extensions. There's a big difference here, Kariti. We insert and remove labels at the top of stack. I think if you want to right. carry IOEM or some other thing across a segment, you probably have to terminate the stack and then uh, manage everything locally. Otherwise, you've basically got to shift some unknown amount of information up a bit and stuff some spare information in and then figure out where to take it out later on. Whereas at least if you put it at the top as a block, you know, these are the label set, these are the, OA, these are the extension headers that apply exclusively to this piece of the stack. It's all well contained and, um, uh, and um, you know, logical. And the so I understand what you're saying. No, I, I get you, but but I think if you think of um, everything that comes above uh, what is here, the yellow piece, the in, original inner packet, as stuff you put onto the packet, yes, it's much bigger than the label stack, but it is stuff that it's not part of the original packet. And yes, you're playing with that. And it is harder to do than just playing with the top, you know, 50 bytes. Now you're maybe playing with 500 bytes or whatever the number turns out to be. But I think where we are with forwarding engines today versus uh, where we were 10 or 20 years ago, um, some of this can be done. And so I don't see that we should rule it out uh, offhand. Uh, the caveat so that you just said that, hey, if you insert a header or remove a header, um, you know, th there could be performance implications of that should be spelled out. But to say that you terminate a tunnel because you're entering a different zone, um, I mean, if you just think about hierarchical tunnels, you're defeating the purpose of the hierarchical tunnel if you have to terminate it uh, because you want to add the IOM for the hierarchy. Okay, space for a question. Uh, are all the extended headers supposed to be uh, processed in the fast path? Is there an indication that says punt the packet to slow path needed? So that, that's my current thinking. Uh, because if you mix them together, then it's uh, very bad, right? Because uh, it's no longer uh, can be um, done in fast pass then we, um, you know, just get to the uh, same issue as uh, uh, was discussed in IPv6. 
So it's very. Well, IPv4, everyone optimizes it away. Yeah, so it's going to be. Well, so IPv6 also does in a way because a lot of people say we won't do um, extension headers in IPv6 because they'll kill us. And so they're like, they, they blanket just block packets that have extension headers for certain types at least. This is, this is a bit different it. because it's inside a provider network. So this is all consenting routers to start with. True, true. But um, I mean, IPv6, I mean, that, that was another mistake that they made, which was not not saying, you know, slow pass, 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 or, or limiting how much is done. So people just blindly drop packets as soon as they get into yeah. their network. So I agree with you, but 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 I think the lessons learned um, should should give us a little guidance. It's so so basically, what certainly makes sense at some point in time when we know what we want to do, to be very crisp about you know fast and slow path, and if anything you know that somebody wants to do would be feasible for anything else, then the fast path I think that should be explicitly highlighted out and maybe even explicitly be signaled. By default, certainly we should expect everything to be in fast path and um, either, you know, know upfront that the router uh, can support it, or if we're not sure, be be very careful in how we uh, specify it. So with that, Carlos, I, yeah. um, I, I totally agree with you, but I think there is an issue there that, you know, individually each extension header may be process, processable in the fast path, but then you put so many of them that you can't actually get through them. And that, that's an issue issue with the IPv6 as well. So, yeah, yeah I right. totally agree with you, but we got to be careful. Well, well I was sitting in Steve Keering's uh, office for, for a long time and complaining about V6 not being specific enough about this, so I have my past pains there. No, no, I think you're completely right that at some point in time when we become too flexible, um, the basic requirements uh, may not be sufficient, but at that, I think at that point in time, we can and must uh, provide very good uh, OEM functionality to recognize those cases. And we are a controlled network, so we have a lot more freedom and capabilities there. Yeah. I, I, I think Kriti mentioned one uh, scenarios. Uh, uh, another another one is for many uh, platform like the uh, software based router or switch. There's no different uh, differentiation between the so called fast pass and the slow pass. Everything is processed in the same place. So so it's really about if you can do it fast or or you cannot do it efficiently. So. In that sense, I, I think we can at least add a policy that if you cannot do that, you can uh, decide uh, to not do that, not to process it, but you shouldn't drop the packet. You should still forward it. So I think uh, that should be a bet, much better policy than um, blindly uh, drop the packet simply because you cannot uh, process it. Well, actually, I think that right. can be an explicit indication, right? That could be a flag bit in terms of if you can't process it, what should you do, right? Because what I mean, you can you you shouldn't do that because uh, each uh, platform has its own capability. You cannot tell uh, is this, this is fast, this is slow, or because no, no, you don't I mean, know because some I mean, some place might be do something much much efficient, much faster than others. So you cannot dictate that. So uh, I think the only thing is uh, you, you can advertise that capability, how you? I, I you can advertise it, but, what? but in the spirit of, you know, putting things in the packet, I mean, if you go back to this, and I don't want to architect things up front, but where you have the next header equals H1, if we do self-describing, you have some space there, and you might be able to put in bits that say, if you don't know what to do with this, drop the packet. If you don't know what to do with this, process it without worrying about it. Uh, not if you don't if you don't have the capability of processing all this, what do you do? And I, I, I think that idea that we can put it in the packet to some extent and definitely do some in the control plane. Uh, but the high order bit is being aware of this and not just blindly wading into we'll just, we'll have lots of hop by hop and uh, other extension headers the way IPv6 did. And maybe I'm not being fair to them, but the fact that um, we can be much more, you know, deliberate about this and decide, um, you know, how.
how these processes, these packets will be processed and what to do if you can't actually get to all the extension headers. Write that down and be aware that this is an issue. I mean, the, the, the war burns from IP and V6 definitely have been that routers that shouldn't even do anything with packets uh, with particular, you know, router alert or extension headers would punt them to, to, to slow path. You couldn't prohibit that. And so in the end, that new feature you wanted to have completely failed because of that backward compatibility issue, right? So, I mean, that's the worst case. Um, but as, yeah. as I said, right there, there and are you, I wanted to say uh, that they're very logical, simple things like, is something optional or not, right? If it's not optional and you can't deal with it, what do you do then? If it's optional, you can simply ignore it. That would be one of the basic, you know, differentiators, for example. Well, if you can't deal with it and you're told to deal with it, then you drop the packet and send an error is the only thing you can do. Uh, I'm not quite I, sure in I, these I, extension headers if, for example, um, things like, um, yes, I would agree that those are the two, you know, known things in terms of ignore it or drop it. But maybe uh, for something, um, it could also be remove the extension header. So yeah, I'm not sure what all the options are. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it might be useful to add some uh, 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 indicators to uh, tell how, the, how to handle this uh, um, particular extension. Well, I, I'm not sure that you'd necessarily want to remove it. You might just want to mark it as void. Yeah, exactly. So all I'm saying is we know the two good old things to do, drop or ignore, but that isn't necessarily the, the, the set of uh, the, the ones we can come up with. I'm sorry to drop in the middle of this interesting conversation, but I got to go. Um, I will catch up on the wiki, I guess. Okay. Uh, thank you, Kiriti. See you. All right. Uh, anything uh, uh, else uh, to Hawaii? Um, I think we're, you're done while you're right. Yes. Okay. If nothing else, I can stop the recording right now. Okay. <laughs>